Hello and welcome back. I have three things to show you today that I have been busy sewing in my studio. Um, all of these really are fun makes and I probably won't get a massive amount of wear out of them, um, but they are just a little bit of fun. Now the first is a skirt and I'm just gonna show it to you because it doesn't really need any explanation, but all I will say, it is an upcycling skirt. So it has been made from a duvet cover. So let me show you. This is my Pokemon skirt. <laughs> so as you can see, it's got Ash and Pikachu and it's covered in all these little Pokeballs and all around the waistband are stars and they also run, ooh, try not to flash, all around the bottom as well. So it's just a simple gathered skirt on a waistband and with an invisible zip in the back. So it's really nice and simple. All I did was cut a long length of duvet cover and run some gathering stitches through the top of it popped it onto a waistband and put an invisible zip in. So a really nice, quick, simple gathered skirt. It's lots of fun. I've left it a little bit longer than I probably would normally, um, but I wanted to get the full pattern repeat in it. And I haven't actually worn this yet. However, I am going to a games convention, a board game convention in a couple of weeks time. I know, nerdy. Um, but my husband's really big on board games and he actually works in the industry. And so we're going to a games um, convention just for the evening to play some games. So I thought it could be quite good fun. So I'll probably wear it for that just with a t-shirt. Um, my son absolutely loves it. If he could wear skirts, I think he would do. Um, and this duvet cover was actually a purchase when we went to Australia last Christmas. I found it in a charity shop. And when I got it home, I realised it was actually a double duvet cover. Um, so it was absolutely massive. So the idea was that I would make a skirt or a dress out of one half of it. And then I would fold the duvet cover in half to make a single duvet cover for Tom, my son. I haven't got around to doing that yet. I don't know that I actually will because he does actually have some Pokemon bedding now. So I do have another big piece of this fabric spare. So I may or may not offer it up um, as a bit of a remnant sale at some point, but I'll keep you posted. Anyway, make number two is another skirt and I've made this to wear to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival in a few weeks time when I go. So I will go and quickly pop it on and come back. So this one's also a little bit of fun. I don't normally wear blue, I have to say, but I couldn't resist the fabric. So I've done a really cheeky little skirt. This one's another gathered one. It's quite short, it's just on the knee, and I've put quite a wide waistband in and cinched it right into my natural waist. So um, it's a bit more poofy, a bit more girly, and I'll probably wear a big white petticoat underneath it with some heels and give it a bit of a vintage look. But as you can see, it's sheep, aren't they gorgeous? Little woolly sheep. So I thought that was absolutely perfect. It's really twirly, very girly, and very, very prim. It almost needs pearls and a little twin set cardi. Um, <laughs> which isn't really me, if I'm honest anymore. It used to be. Um, but I do quite like it. I will wear it for Edinburgh and then after that I don't know that I will necessarily wear it again. It might become a shop sample. Um, it's not, although when I saw the fabric online and thought, oh I've got to get that, I've got to make a skirt, when it arrived I actually thought to myself, do you know what, I would make a better project bag than it would a skirt. <laughs> and I may still chop this skirt up and turn it into a project bag. Um, but I will wear it um, for Edinburgh Yarn Festival. I'll probably wear it on the Thursday afternoon evening for the Knit and Natter night. Um, that will also help as well if people are out looking for me. They'll be able to find me, hopefully, because they'll spot my sheep skirt. Um, I probably won't wear it to the show itself on the Friday, but we shall see. So the last make is a top, so I'll go and change. I'll be back in a minute. Hello! How cool is this? <laughs> this is so much fun. 
This is my Tilly and the Buttons Agnes t-shirt and it's been made with the Dushin fabric that I bought from Charlie Girl when I went to the October Knitting and Stitch show. So I showed it off to you a little while ago in my fabric haul. It's been in my box for ages. It was ever such a quick make. I literally cut it out and sewed it together I think in a couple of hours one afternoon. Now interestingly, after my last video, if you've watched it, you will have seen with my disaster with um, stretch cotton and making sure the stretch goes in the right direction. I've had a very similar thing happen with this top. However, it's not so much about the direction of the stretch, it's about the amount of stretch. Now, although this fabric is quite a thin t-shirty jersey, it actually doesn't have all that much stretch in it. Now I made a size 4 Agnes top because I knew that I wanted it to be tight and I didn't want it to be baggy. Um, but actually there isn't really very much stretch in this fabric and so it's actually really quite tight on my arms. And I could have done with using um, doing a size 5 to actually make the top less clingy and less tight. So do bear that in mind if you're using more of a t-shirt fabric which doesn't really have a lot of give in it then you might need to go up a size um, with Tilly's patterns. So this as I say it's a t-shirty um, fabric I decided I wasn't going to do any of the elastic ruching here I wasn't going to put the puffy sleeves in I just went for plain sleeves plain boat neck just so that I could have it as a plain t-shirt. So you can see it fits really nicely. I'm pleased I went with um, a four for the body. I think it fits nicely. It stretches across my bust nicely. But I could possibly have done with um, just putting a bit more width into the arms from sort of the elbows down. And I might do that if I use a fabric like this again. But it's lots of fun. The neckline went in almost perfectly. There is a tiny bit... I don't think it's on the front, I think it's on the back. There is a tiny bit that is a little bit narrower than the rest. I think it might be here, possibly. Um, but it's so tiny that only I know about it, well, and all of you now. But <laughs> it's so tiny that it's not going to get spotted um, by the general public. And I just made this as a really just a knockabout t-shirt to wear every day. Um... It's not for a special occasion and it doesn't matter. And realistically, I'm going to set you a bit of a challenge here. Pop down to, I don't know, Tesco's, Next, Dorothy Perkins, a couple of the high street shops and have a look at their basic tops. Pick them apart a bit because I guarantee you there will be elements of those tops that aren't made all that well. You often find bunched up stitches along the hems. You find um, Breton tops where the stripes don't match under the arms or you might find the seam under the armpit isn't a perfect cross. Um, there's lots of different things that you could have a look at in high street garments and they're not particularly well made. So when you make something yourself, you'll probably find that the item is probably far better made than high street, even if it has one or two tiny little imperfections in it. And as we always say, it's only going to be you that knows about those imperfections. And everyone else is going to say, oh my goodness, Claire, look at that dash and top. How amazing is that? Where did you get it? And you're going to be able to say, well, actually, I made it. And that's the best bit about making your own clothes. So they're my three little makes for you. It's a really short, sharp video. I told you it would be small. Um, but I have got another couple up my sleeve that should be with you in the next week or so. So fear not, the sewing videos are back with a bomb. So I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.